Hello, my name is Ed, amateur radio operator, WA6RZW. Today I will show you how you can use an inexpensive FTA satellite receiver to view amateur digital television signals. FTA receivers are designed to decode uncrypted DVBS satellite signals. The receiver I will use for this demonstration was used for KU band satellites with transponders operating in the 12 gigahertz range. When we get into the actual configuration a little later, I'll show you how we can fool the receiver into decoding our L-band 1.2 gigahertz amateur TV signal while tuning the transponder frequency to the 12 gigahertz range. A word of caution before we start the configuration. FTA receivers provide a 12 volt DC power source from the antenna connection to the circuits located in the dish antenna. Don't make any connections to the antenna jack until the DC power is turned off or disabled in the configuration. Short circuiting the antenna connection can damage the FTA receiver. If you're in the market for a used FTA receiver, be sure you get one with its original remote control. It makes configuration and controlling the receiver much easier than minimal buttons on the front panel of the receiver. Now let's take a look at the configuration process. We're going to begin the setup of the SonicView SV4000 uh, FTA satellite receiver and we're going to be configuring it for receiving DVBS amateur digital television signals. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up the, uh, the menu and uh, the, the very first thing we're going to do after bringing up the menu is we're going to go down to the bottom of the list on the installation menu and do a factory reset. I'll click uh, OK and uh, we're going to erase all the data. Basically we're going to erase all the channel data that was previously uh, configured into the receiver and we're going to uh, override all the uh, user settings for such things as uh, as the language as you can see uh, brightness and contrast uh, output type uh, whether it's uh, 4 by 3 aspect or 16 by 9 aspect so all that kind of thing is going to be uh, erased. We're going to select English as our language and then uh, before I begin the actual configuration for the uh, receiver for the uh, amateur TV station I'm going to uh, uh, go back and uh, just configure the uh, menu so that we can see it a little better. I mentioned uh, we overwrote the uh, contrast and color and uh, brightness and things like that and what I'm going to do is improve the contrast here a little bit by going to the user settings and I'm going to uh, increase the uh, the contrast on the menu so that we can see it a little bit better on the screen. After that I'll just go back to the installation menu, menu and I'm going to choose dish settings. Basically we have three steps to perform. We have to configure a satellite and in our case it's going to be a pseudo satellite. It's not a real satellite and we're going to configure a transponder on that satellite and then after we configure the transponder we're going to add a channel to the transponder which will give us our uh, amateur TV station signal. So I'm choosing dish settings and the very first item on the dish settings menu is a satellite. We can use an existing satellite or we can create our own new satellite. In this case we're just going to create our own new satellite uh, by clicking the OK button and it brings up a list of all the satellites uh, that are in the receiver's menu, in the receiver's memory. When I did that factory reset 
it did not reset this portion of the configuration. All the satellites come pre-programmed from the factory and all you're actually doing is adding transponders and channels to the existing satellites. So what we're going to do is is go down uh, and you notice uh, on the bottom row of the menu there are uh, three colored buttons red, green, yellow and blue. And the first button, the red button is add sat which means add a satellite. I'm going to press the red button and it uh, brings up a little menu that says enter new satellite name. The default is sat-1 and we can change that name to uh, Ham uh, One or uh, Amateur Digital TV is anything, uh, any number of things. This is your personal preference. I'm going to leave it as the default SAT One, and uh, we have two options at the bottom of the screen. We can either cancel delete with the red button or press the green button to save. I'm going to press the green button and save it. As you'll see on the list now, we have satellite number 196. SAT1 and it indicates that it has user-defined coordinates and we're finished with adding the satellite. I'm going to hit the exit button to go back to the previous menu and you'll notice now at the top highlighted in yellow is SAT1. And We're going to go through the uh, items below the satellite and configure those items. The first item is the LMB power as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the tape, the uh, FTA receiver provides a 12-volt signal to the satellite dish, and uh, this is where we control that power. And you might think in the future, uh, if you want to add an antenna-mounted amplifier before your receiver, this is how you can get the power for that receiver and uh, control the power to the receiver. So we're going to turn that off. We don't want the uh, we don't want the power in this case. The LMB type. I'm not sure what all of these mean, but I'm just going to uh, uh, choose single LMB type single. Now we're going to need a LMB frequency. This is a local oscillator frequency, and uh, in order to set this, we need two pieces of information. Uh, we need to know our frequency of our amateur digital TV station and we need to know the transponder frequency that we want to use. The LMB frequency is the difference between the transponder frequency and the frequency of our amateur digital TV station. In our case the LMB frequency is going to be 11.295 or 11. 295 gigahertz. Now I'm just going to enter that with the keypad on the remote control. So there we have our LMB frequency 11295. The next piece of information we need to add is our transponder and we actually have to add a transponder. Uh, there are so if we hit uh, the OK button, it'll take us to the transponder menu, transponder list. And once again, at the, toward the bottom of the screen, you'll see the colored buttons. Add transponder, delete transponder, edit transponder, and add a PID or program ID. In our case, we're going to add a transponder with the red button. That brings up another little menu, so we have to it's asking us to fill in the frequency of the transponder. And remember, our, our uh, digital amateur TV frequency is the difference frequency, is the difference between the, the local oscillator frequency and the transponder frequency. So in our case, our digital TV station frequency is 1255 megahertz so we're going to add 1255 to the local oscillator frequency to arrive at the transponder frequency so if we add 11295 and 1255 
we come up with a transponder frequency of 12550. So I'm going to enter that here. The next important piece of information that is absolutely required in order to make our receiver work is the symbol rate. So we have to know the symbol rate of the digital TV station, the transmitter symbol rate. In our case, the symbol rate is 3000. So I'm going to enter, uh, it's a uh, uh, five digit number, so I'm going to start with a leading zero, zero, three, zero, 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 and it has a symbol rate of 3000 or 3000 megabaud. The next parameter is polarization. This is antenna polarization, and it is important if you're actually putting in a satellite transponder. In our case, the polarization doesn't matter at all, and you can just leave it at auto, or you can set it to either horizontal or vertical. It makes no difference at all. The next parameter is forward error correction, and it's the algorithm that is used by the digital TV station for forward error correction. So it is set to auto and it will work in the auto mode. But in our case we know that our transmitter is set to 7-8, which means that it's sending 8 bits for every 7 bits of information. So we're going to change the uh, forward error correction parameters to 7 slash 8. So there it is, it's set to 7 8. So that that uh, takes care of setting all the parameters for the transponder on our new satellite. I'm going to hit OK and go back uh, to the previous menu and I'm going to hit OK again and you'll notice that now our transponder shows a frequency of 12550. So this is the, the pseudo frequency. This is the frequency that the, if we had a satellite dish antenna uh, attached, this is the frequency that the satellite dish antenna would be looking for for SAT1. The next parameter is something called 22 kilohertz and this is the uh, control frequency that is used by um, the FTA receiver to control an actual satellite antenna but since we don't have an antenna it's not important and we're going to leave it in the off position. The search option which we will need is set to FTA. There are a couple parameters Basically, FTA means unscrambled signals, unencrypted sig signals, and CAS are uh, encrypted signals. And uh, the search option, we can just leave it in the FTA position. It'll make the search a little quicker. The network search is set to off. Uh, we don't need that. And the disk equipment control is set to off. Once again, this is the a parameter used to uh, uh, control the uh, um, different parameters for actual satellite receivers such as the azimuth and the elevation uh, and things of that nature and all of that is going to be turned off because we don't really have a satellite that we're looking for. The motor control once again is for satellite controlled if we had a motor controlled uh, automatically controlled satellite antenna. This is the control that or parameter that would allow us to control the motor. And we have this disabled legacy switch once again something that we don't use. So that sets all our parameters for satellite one and for our new transponder. The next thing we have to do is scan the the transponder, scan the satellite to see if we can find any signals. Now, one of the important things to recognize is that in order for this to work, we actually have to have a amateur digital TV station operating on the frequency that we entered so that it will be found. 
you'll notice on the right side of the menu there is a signal meter and we've actually uh, tuned, already tuned the receiver and you can notice that we have a signal strength of 58 and a quality level of 100 which means that we are actually receiving the digital TV signal uh, from the uh, transmitter, from the amateur TV transmitter. But we're going to go through now and scan the transponder and once again it uses the colored buttons. We can either scan, a lot, scan the, uh, the entire satellite or we can sp scan an individual transponder. In our case we only have one transponder so we can press the green button and trans, uh, scan the transponder looking for our channel. I'm going to press the green button and run the scan. And we'll wait for the scan to complete and basically you'll see that uh, we have a hundred percent of SAT1 has been scanned and it found one out of one signal and it indicates a signal strength of uh, just over 50% and a quality level is all the way over to the right indicating 100%. And uh, it asks us if we want to change, uh, save this information and we're going to click yes and save the information. It will update in the receiver's memory. So we have now found the our station, our amateur station that we're looking for. I'm going to back out of this menu and it's going to ask us if we want to save all the settings for the particular satellite and we'll say yes and we actually have a picture on the screen from the amateur uh, TV transmitter and I'm going to bring up the uh, the menu once again and uh, now edit the channels. We have uh, so far we have entered, we have put in a satellite, we put in a transponder, and now we'll edit edit the channel uh, on the uh, on the transponder. And uh, our channel list indicates that we have channel one. And well, the only thing we're going to do now is to change the channel name. And you'll notice there's a picture uh, from our amateur digital station on the right hand side of the screen and I'm going to select the yellow button which says rename channel and it brings a little menu it's like a uh, keypad uh, similar to a computer keyboard or a, a cell phone keyboard and uh, you could just toggle around the uh, keyboard with the arrow keys and select the uh, terminology. I'm going to name this uh, DTA 107 as that is the the modulator uh, the modulator name in the uh, that the is being used in the uh, amateur TV station and I'm just going to call this channel DTA 100 uh, DTA 107. So there's DTA dash and there's 107. And press the green button to save that information. I'll exit the menu and it asks me if I want to save. I'll say yes. And there it is on the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can see the, uh, the channel number and when you uh, hit the channel up or down button um, you can see that being displayed. That's the extent of our FTA satellite receiver setup. Remember, you will still want to set the other parameters such as aspect ratio, video options, output type, and so on. If you happen to see WA6RZW digital TV on the air with your new satellite receiver, do send us a QSL card. Please indicate the date and time, the program you were watching. We will be happy to send you a confirmation card in return. We are always looking for signal and quality reports. 
Please tell us about your receiving location, the type of receiver and antenna you are using. Include any comments you may have about WA6RZW Digital TV. Thanks very much for watching.